Welcome back to the new user training. Uh, this is the afternoon session. We're going to talk about the data science ecosystem at NERSC. Um, remember that if you have questions, uh, you should post them uh, to the Google Doc, and I'll add that to the chat if I can here in case people need that link. Uh, while the talk is going on, feel free to post questions there. Um, and if we need to, um, if, we, if we can answer them while the speaker is going, then we'll do that. Uh, otherwise, uh, the speaker will pick up the questions at the end. So the first talk that we're going to have is an overview of the data ecosystem at NERSC by Wahid Binji from Data and Analytics Services Group. So take it away, Wahid. Hi, thanks, Ronan. Um, yep, so I'm just going to be just giving a brief overview to start. Uh, so this is just the, the schedule this afternoon, so I, I'm talking first. Oh, we uh, don't hear you. Oh. Oh. Well, we just... Uh. Well, I do. I do. Oh. Uh oh. So I'll carry on and then someone can just tell Rod in, because I assume it's him that's got the problem. Does that I sound good? still don't hear you. Yeah, but it's your problem, really. <laughs> this is, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll keep talking and get switch. Um, so actually, I'm just, so this is actually wrong because I'm only speaking for 10 minutes and then Bill, I think, is talking for 20 minutes about uh, And then I'll talk a bit more about the file systems and in particular the burst buffer, which is a sort of um, slightly different sort of file system. Uh, uh, and then Lisa will talk about um, two, like ways that we can use the file systems in terms of transferring in data. And then Quincy will talk about application IO practices. And then after the break, we have more sort of analytics topics, first of all, about Python and Jupyter at NERSC, um, which is our container technology that I think you briefly heard about earlier. And then finally, the interesting topic of deep learning that Mustafa will be presenting. Okay, so here, here's just an overview of the whole, what like maybe comes within the, the idea of the data at NERSC. If uh, these technologies we'll be talking about more in detail in later talks, uh, some we won't be, uh, but I'll just go through kind of what they are and they've been put in the categories of um, accessing data, um, either transferring in, so um, our recommended way of doing that is Globus, but at least it will uh, then uh, interfacing with NERSC, where we have, um, as you probably, as you heard in the morning a bit, uh, Jupyter, and you'll hear more about that later. And this funny symbol here is NX, I believe, which is um, this no machine way of accessing NERSC that you heard about in the morning. Support web portals, which we won't be talking about here. I'll briefly mention an easy way of putting things on the web, but uh, there's much more you can do. Um, and we have people who can help with that as well. And, and many people use, for example, the Django framework. And this thing, Newt, is a, an API we have so you can actually schedule it. There's a sort of refresh of this coming called the Super Facility API, which I won't be talking about either, but um, there are ways to do that if you need to. Then Workflows Bill is going to talk about this in lots of detail. There's some tools here like Task Farmer and Fireworks that we're supporting for some time, and then some new option. Um, that are coming, that are coming, and that we're happy to help you with. Um, then, in terms of data management, uh, these things on the left are file formats. So HDF is a very common and widely used across uh, different groups uh, uh, file format. And Quincy is a super expert. <laughs> we will be talking later. Uh, NetCDF and Root are like uh, heavily used by the communities that use them. So. Um, we do also provide some support for those, but um, if you're not in those communities, then you're probably not that interested in that. <laughs> uh, and then in terms of data, we don't have a talk on that, but um, you can look up our documentation. And the main thing to know is that there is a form there if you want the database and that we do host database, uh, both MongoDB, sort of uh, larger data sets, um, and uh, MySQL and Postgres for um, you know, traditional SQL type um, databases. Uh, and then the data analytics space is quite broad, and you'll hear a little bit about this in the Python talk and also in the deep learning talk. So these things on the right are deep learning frameworks, 
uh, but we also support um, and have license for those as well, uh, R and uh, Spark for distributed analytics. Uh, and then in the area of visualization, which is important also for traditional HPC applications, we support Visit and PowerView. Okay, uh, software, but then also there are there are features, if you like, particularly on Cori. Uh, and so these are a kind of bunch of things. Some of them, uh, some of them require a bit more work, particularly in integrating with our high performance computing uh, environment that's really about running big jobs, which is very compatible with running uh, intensive jobs. Um, so you know, the, the most basic thing here is having quite beefy login nodes and many of them. So you're not supposed to run long running uh, applications on these, but you can run uh, short things interactively on there and it's good to have beefy nodes for that purpose. If you have long running things that you need, for example, to control workflows, then we have some separate login like nodes that can be used. And again, there's a form on the web for this. You just have to say what your use case is and what your application is. Um, if you have bigger memory requirements, we also have some big mem nodes just as you in them. Uh, and then in terms of queues, maybe this box should go over here actually, but we also have other queues that are maybe um, super for data analytics jobs or um, experimental data analysis jobs, such as um, a shared node queue if you don't need a node for your application. Um, so that can be serial jobs or any actual fraction of a node. Uh, and then a separate queue for transfers so that they can uh, you know, queued up as well. Um, and then we, we see that some needs experience at NERSC, we have queues and it can take some time for a job to get through those depending on the size of it. But some experiments have needs for real time uh, things. So things actually run when you submit it. And this obviously requires dedicated resource on our part. So again, it's by request uh, via a, a sort of application for that, but we can support it. Uh, and then in another useful feature is interactive queue. So here you can request up to six nodes per project and up to four hours, and you can usually get quite a lot quick response on that. Uh, then once your jobs are running, we have containers, which uh, we'll about later. Um, I'll talk about the burst buffer in more detail later, so I won't go through that. But another area that we've worked on in Cori is um, access to external data sets directly into compute nodes. Um, so this just shows that um, you know all these data we have, uh, we've kind of learned from our experience on Cori, and we're building on that for Perlmutter. So for example, I/O we have this burst buffer, which you'll see is our system, but it requires management of your data. You have to move things into the first buffer and out again. So on Perlmutter, this will be easier data management. Uh, then analytics, this, this ranges from experiment software, which can be huge stacks that are difficult to manage, uh, where Shifter can help for a lot, uh, and things where you want just high performance libraries on the system. And those, again, will be better on Perlmutter and um, deep learning in particular, enhanced by the, the hardware of Perlmutter GPUs. Um, and then in terms of workflow, I mean, we're just uh, sort of moving direction, getting this into the system so it's easier to manage your workflows. And in terms of data transfer, this thing I mentioned at the end that we actually had to do quite a bit of uh, external data transfer on Cori. Uh, this will hopefully be much better from the outset with um, Perlmutter, based fabric, both for high performance and for external access. Okay, so I probably don't want to take up any more time. I mean, this is to show everything will be awesome on Perlmutter. <laughs> data coming in and out and flying across all over the place and controlled in the way that you desire. Um, so the last thing I just wanted to say that generally we have quite a lot of staff supporting data use cases at NERSC so, and we're here to help. And, you know, normally this session is quite interactive when we're able to meet in person with people, um, but you know, to give you another way of contact, it's been mentioned earlier, but with the, the NUG, it's not, this is not an official supported uh, support channel at NERSC, but it is, you can contact the users and normally we're hanging out there as well. So feel free to, to message us directly or uh, with suitable 
etiquette and uh, provide any feedback and critique you have. And in also any interesting collaborations you want with nurse machines. Okay, that was me. It's just an overview. All right, I'm ready to take over. Okay. Any questions though? I can't. Nope. Uh, there's no questions in the Google Doc. Thanks, Joaquin, and sorry about the audio mix up at the start. 